Shalom, uh, how do you say family in ancient Hebrew? Uh, I am Shalom, I am. Um, yeah, so my, my son is sleeping right now, and um, I thought it would be on my, it's like on my spirit to do another dream that I had. Um, this dream came on the Sunday Sunday night so um, I'm going to just say what the dream was and I have some scriptures here that explain like what the dream was trying to say um, when I put scriptures to it alright so Heavenly Father I just pray that you allow this this word to go out um, in the manner and in the way that you that you want it to go out and um, yeah in Yeshia HaMashiach's name uh, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ of Nazareth his name and in the Holy Spirit and in this I pray alright so the dream I'm trying not to be too loud because you know, I don't want to wake my son up. This is like rest time. Okay, so. In the dream, right? I was in like a place. And, um. It was like, I was like a school. I was like in school in a way. We were outside. It was daytime. I was with like a group of people, you know. Our teacher, who was supposed to teach us. Came from somewhere not sure where and she was like I'm going to be here for 10 minutes after that 10 minutes I will I will have to go so um, while I'm here all of you guys do laps around this place so there was like this circle and it was like she was telling us to go and do laps around this place until the 10 minutes are over and she can leave so I was like okay cool yeah that's all right so yeah so okay she she gave us an instruction so i went and i was like um everyone kind of just started to go it was a bit slow everyone just started to go and run 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 the laps that she told us to for 10 minutes and i went and i turned to her and i was like yes like i, I reassured her that yes we will run this lap like yes we will run until the 10 minutes um would was up so yeah, she was like, oh, okay, like she just was, yeah, I just reassured her and then I ran. And I ran straight to the front of the people who were running the laps. I was right at the front, I was like, whoa, I'm like right at the front, there's like no one right, there's no one before me. It was like people were running next to me, but like I was right at the front, you know. And um, there was also this other guy um, at the beginning of running that lap, there was another guy who was like, he was like, running next to me he was like pretending to like beat me and stuff but like he wasn't like beating me and then like he just like slowly like faded away like so anyways yeah so I was like running I was like right at the front I was right at the front I was like oh, right at the front and then I, then we went we ran 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 we turned around and we came back now when we came back it was like all oh, this wind came like it was like the trees were like the trees were like this and this is what i saw i saw people on the other end of the lap they were just like walking and they weren't even walking in the way that you run the lap they were walking the other way i saw people like like they weren't even worrying about it they were just kind of walking like this way they were just walking like like they, it, it was like they weren't even in the race anymore so many people were like not in the race anymore and i was like running i i just remember like this huge gush of wind came and it was like and people there was even people there who were just talking with each other and who were so casual about this wind that was there they were just like you know like when you see people walk down the street and it's like you know they're having a conversation and it's like nobody else is around them that's what it was like and they were walking at you know just like 
that kind of pace. In the meantime, I'm seeing all this wind. And they're just like... Like... And, and I was running, I was running, and I was... It felt like I was the only one in that dream that was still running. Like, there probably could have been some people behind me. I'm really not sure. But I know that when that wind came, it felt like I was one of the last people still running. And that was just... In, in the dream, like, I was happy because I was still in the race. Um, I was so happy, I was so happy, and I remember just running, 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 going around the curve, just like anticipating what was next, and then slowly it just like faded out, and I woke up, so, yeah, Ooh. Ooh, so what I learned, what I learned is that when you dream, it's like an insight into the spiritual realm. The Most High is allowing you to see in the spiritual realm. Even when it's a demonic dream, you still uh, you still allowed. The Most High is allowing it. There is no way that you can have a dream. The Most High has no idea about it. When you have a dream, the Most High knows about it. So when you have a demonic dream, the Most High is trying to show you something. The Most High is trying to show you what kind of spirits are uh, uh, around you, so you can get delivered from those spirits. That's why dreams are very important to listen to, but um, you have to test everything because the Most High is not an author or not the author of confusion, and usually what he says, well, yeah, what he says is final, right? So, anyways, um, I know that the spiritual realm, when you have dreams, it's like an insight into the spiritual realm. I myself have been revealed that I am a prophetess. That is my function in that's that's you know you got the fivefold and I understand that I am a prophetess and um, so um, it, prophetess can also incline with being a seer so you can see into the spiritual realm and you know there's like certain sensations that you can get certain indicators of when you feel like an evil spirit or when you feel like you're doing something against the most high or just you know, uh, just seeing things in the spiritual realm and not every seer, prophetess, evangelist, pastor, um, teacher is the same. So, um, you know, we're all given a vocation and it's important that we know our vocation, I believe, to an extent, to an extent. In saying this, that dream... I did write down scriptures about that dream, and as as I said, like I saw wind, you know, heavy, heavy, heavy wind, like strong wind. It was like people were not running anymore. People were caught in the wind. People weren't. People weren't in the race. So the first scripture I have here is Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12. And um, I'm going to read from... Yeah, um, 11 to 14, maybe to 16. Uh, okay. All right. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers, 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This scripture, chapter uh, verse 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Yeshua, Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, 
according to the effectual work in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So, emphasis obviously on verse 14. Be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Thinking of that wind, I'm thinking tossed to and fro. Even I remember these vision like these these girls i think they were just walking and they were walking in the opposite direction while the wind was going they were just like walking like talking to each other like people were not alarmed they weren't alarmed it was like and then even some were just flying with it i don't even know if they were aware of what was going on but the wind is like you know when they have a typhoon or whatever it was just that intense in the dream but it's like, what's going on? Like, it was like people were not aware of it. You know, and that's so scared. That's that's scary. Scared. That's so. That's that's not a good thing. So I'm thinking, you know, as having an insight into the spiritual realm. Maybe I'm seeing into the spiritual realm. This is what is going on within the body of Hamashiach, and that is very dangerous. And we need to start getting it together. We really not need to start getting it together because we need to get back in the race. We need to pray and watch and um, cleave, cleave unto the most high, so that wind doesn't take you. That you know that you have you're cleaving unto the foundation, the rock. So that when that wind comes and these other doctrines come to deceive you, the cunning craftiness of Lucifer, Satan, when they come, you won't be moved. You will be immovable. All right, the next few scriptures, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, and the emphasis is verse 24. And verse 27. All right. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. Run. And every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an in incorruptible. Mm. I therefore so run not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it unto subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. <sighs> that verse 27 as well. I wanted to uh, emphasize verse 27 as well as the one like, like, we run all. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So we were all running at the beginning of the race, right? We all knew that we had a mission. We all knew that the teacher said that we have to run until the 10 minutes is over, and then she will go. And I guess that means we can do whatever we want after that. So we ran. We were all running. It wasn't even like, you know, we, we, I, how would you say maybe halfway through halfway through the race the wind came and people were not in it anymore i was seeing people walk the opposite direction i was seeing this wind i was seeing people get like you know a bit um i remember th I, 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 there was like it was a bit hazy but i remember the wind came and it was like this was intense but I was like on the race and I was like smiling because I knew I was still in the race and I was still like coming first. <laughs> Not in a baseball manner, but like, you know, just running for the most high, you know, I, I take it very seriously. And that's why I was happy within this dream, because even when you're in a dream, like, you know, 
what is going on and you know that this is like a spiritual dream and you know in the dream that you know you will get an insight into the spiritual realm with what you know here in what you call the physical realm what you've learned in the physical realm like how you fed yourself in the physical realm like me reading the bible me reading um understanding of of, of dreams through through the bible texts like it's like it's with me that knowledge is still with me within the dream sometimes it may not be i think sometimes like you may be having a dream and it's not necessarily like you know that but this dream I knew and I was happy to be at the front of the race and I believe the most I was giving me an insight into the spiritual realm so this t verse 27 is so deep because he says um, he keeps under his body and he brings it into subjection you know, in, in your Shia, bringing it into subjection, lest by any means, when I have preached to others, it's like, we're in this race, and like, we can be talking to others, and telling people about the Bible, and, and giving them the scriptures that they need, but what happens when that wind takes us away? Are we a castaway? Should we be a castaway? Should we preach the truth as a castaway? Should we preach the Bible as a castaway? And then it says, lest, by, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We don't want that. So that took a train. Um, that was like a train of thought. It went on to another thought about being lukewarm. Being a castaway. Being lukewarm. Being spewed out of the mouth of Christ. Because you're ignoring his voice. And obedience is better than sacrifice. The most high may ask you to do something. And I still, you know, I'm still in this walk with you and with many others out there. And it's very important that we obey his voice. So uh, I went to... Matthew, Matthew chapter 7, these are some scriptures I wrote down, 13, verse 13 to 14, so enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I feel like this dream was an example of that. We were given an instruction. It was very simple, and we could easily whip out those laps for 10 minutes. If we listen, well, I wouldn't say it would be easy, but we can do it for sure. But instead... got distracted, you know, distractions came, um, the wind tossed people, you know, um, people were walking casually the opposite direction, I don't even know how many people were still running with me when I was running, so that instruction was given, and it's just like when we come into this walk, we're given instructions, and it's up to us to stick to the path. It's up to us to follow the instructions. To follow the instructions or to walk the other direction. And to, to when the wind comes, to be blown away in other directions. So this, these two verses in chapter 7, 13 and 14, they truly apply to this walk today. There is a wind trying to take the body of Yeshaya away from Yeshaya and the calling that he gave us. There is. I seen it. I saw it. But we must continue on in the race. We must do it for Yeshaya's sake. Yeshaya gave up too much. 
He gave up so much for us. His blood that was shed for us. He gave up too much for us to just be caught in the world again and ensnared in the world. We have to come out. Revelation. I think this is the first love one. So yeah, okay, this is a different one. Okay, so I also wrote another one, which is in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. Nevertheless, these are Yeshua's words, Yeshua Christ. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Yeshai is telling you that you need to return to that fire that you had when you first came into the knowledge of him and the walk and him saving you from the sin that you were once in. He's saying return, return, return unto that fire. Remember, remember how on fire you were for me. Why are you now compromising your walk? Why are you now forgetting what, what I delivered you from? Why are you now trying to please man in the sense of forgetting me? Why are you fearing man when you know that you should fear me? I was given all power in heaven and earth. Why have you compromised? Why have you forgotten what I've given you? I've given you power to, to tread on scorpions and serpents. But do not rejoice in that. Rejoice in the fact that your names are written in heaven. So this is a very important point. We must return. We must get to that beginning stage again and run as the teacher told us to run. The master, whom is Yeshai HaMashiach, whom reconciled us back to the Father. True Israel and Gentiles. The last bit of scripture that I wrote was Matthew chapter 25, which is the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. This is a very powerful chapter. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be blackened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Two, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Three, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Four, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Mm -mm. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Any day, can be the time that you were called, your hairs are numbered, any day. And will that oil, will you still have oil in your lamp? Will you have enough for that day?
when that wind come? Will you be ready to continue to run, to continue to focus on the mission that was sent by the teacher? The mission you were told by the teacher? Will you still run? Will you still focus? Will you still be rooted in your Shia Hamashiach? Will you still have the fire to run? Something to think about. <laughs>